Hi everyone, it's been some time since I last published a longer devlog and so on this video I would like to expand on what has been done in the last few weeks. I have added a few features to the game and also fixed some issues that were breaking the player experience or the game altogether. But before going into details, if you are new to the channel, I am publishing devlogs and sharing my experience with creating an MMORPG in Unity. You can see my previous devlogs since May 2019, and there is a lot of material that I haven't posted yet from the very beginnings, and I plan to publish some of it later on. So if you want to get notified when new videos are out, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Because I am a small content creator, smashing the like button will help me out a lot. Now without further ado, let's take a look at latest developments. Kicking it off, I did a pass on the combat system. One thing that was bothering me in the combat system when I was simulating higher latencies was that the spells were not seamlessly firing one after the other. In this case it was due to the fact that the client was also doing extra validations and so if the spell is on cooldown on the client it didn't allow sending the cast command even if in the server in reality it was already ready to cast. I removed that check which means now users can spam the server but even still this means you still have to spam the keyboard to get the spells chained more rapidly. To make it simpler and reduce the impact latency has on the gameplay, I am testing out server chaining of spells. So what happens now is that if you send a spell while another is being cast, it is stored on the server. However, this stored spell will only be cast if it arrives into the server within 700 milliseconds of the turn to be cast. So for example, if it was a second ago that you fired that next spell, it will not be cast, but if it was cast within half a second, it will be stored and eventually cast if it is valid when the time comes. This can be cancelled by hitting the escape button at this point, or moving if the spell requires casting. And you can see the result is seamless spell casting with less effort. From a mastery point of view, this means that uh, repeatedly smashing a key has less relevance than just knowing what spell to cast at the right time. While what I show here is just a few spells available, later versions will have more spells, with modifiers playing a bigger role in the game. So currently it's 700 milliseconds, but this might change, and it's something that only with player feedback and trial and error will get a good sense of what is a good value. I also added the ability to stop casting by hitting the escape key. Previously only movement would cancel spells if they had casting time, and this does not require movement, which can be useful for some boss fights too, for example. Uh, players need to cast spells but they can't move um, as part of boss mechanic and hint, this is one of the bosses I have planned. Camera. Another improvement is the ability to zoom in and away from the character. This is great because different players like playing at different distances from their characters and also depending on the context. So for example, for combat you might want a view more far away, so you have a bigger view of what's going on, while going around the city, for example, you might want a closer view. To zoom in and out, you can use the mouse wheel, and the zooming in is smooth with the maximum speed of lurping in this case. One thing to note was that uh, in some game windows, like the spell window, there is a scroll view. While scrolling on the spells, the camera was also zooming in and out, and so I am blocking now the zoom while hovering UI elements, similar to how I did with the camera rotation using the mouse. Character stats and character panel. For some time, I already had implemented stats calculation on the server side, so if you buff yourself up and get more stamina, that was visible in unit frames because of the health update. Now, whenever your stats change on the server, the server also sends a message with a status update related to your character, 
which includes base and calculated stats, which is useful to display to the player. This also enabled the character panel. The window that was uh, pre-built in this UI asset has a few things, among which is a list of stats. So I had the behavior to set and update this list of stats, and for example if I cast this buff, which grants me stamina, you can see that my stamina changes along with the health in my unit frame. These stats in the character panel are only updated when the server sends the stats update to reduce load on the UI. I also added a rendering of the character, so behind the scenes what I do is to make a duplicate of the model I am inspecting, keep it in the idle animation and change its layer. This is important, so it renders only the character and nothing else. I then attach a camera to it, and it is a simple rendering for now, it is not possible to rotate or zoom in at the moment, but that will be added uh, sometime in the future, and the result I think already is very satisfying and does the job. You might also notice there are uh, tabs for reputations and titles. Currently, these are only placeholders, and don't represent anything in the game state. There will be reputations and titles, but I have not implemented them yet. To also test the combat I added some training dummies. To do this I added three new flags, dummy, immortal and self-healing. Self-healing and immortal don't actually work right now, they are just flags that exist in the editor and uh, they are there, so as soon as I implement this in the system, it's already, it's already kicking in all the characters that have those flags set. It also has a huge health pool, since it doesn't really uh, self-heal or is immortal. Now, to give a bit more liveliness to the scene, I wanted to have some NPCs training in the training dummies. Now, to do this, I used what I already had. In this case, I had the training dummies there, and then I used factions. So the guards are, have a specific faction associated to them, and I added a faction to the training dummies, and in this case I made the guards hate the training dummies. The result is that as soon as the guards spawn, they will immediately start attacking the training dummies, which actually gives a nice feeling that they are actually training, when in reality they are raging and trying to smash the training dummies. Which is pretty cool, so with a little effort I could actually use things, uh, features I already had, and uh, not actually have to fake uh, training, they're actually hitting the dummies. Later on I might change this, so to have a, a list of actions that they will perform, and uh, as opposed to actually calculating combat and uh, attacks and hits and all that stuff. I also added NPC patrolling from point to point, so now I'm using uh, game object to define points, which is not optimal, but um, it does the job. So maybe a simple option later on is that uh, on loading I will get the position of the, these game objects and then I'll just delete them so they don't need to be updated uh, while the server is running. There were also a few more fixes done. For example, character selection uh, for AOE on the ground so the projection was broken and I had to fix that. So there have been some developments as you can see. Uh, behind the scenes I also have done a lot of improvements on the networking side, including party groups and uh, movement updates. I will show that in one of the next videos, uh, where I want to actually show online um, testing with more players rather than just me with multiple clients on the computer. So that will be a nice test to have, and yeah. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, and if you like this video, smash the like button. See you in the next video. Bye.